Hi guys, so I'm going to make a few videos to cover geometric optics since we don't have time to cover it in class. So that's going to be for students who want to take the MCAT, for example, they always have questions um, about lenses or um, optical uh, instruments. Or it's for physics majors and or for whoever is interested. So I highly recommend that you use your textbook as well as I'm gonna just uh, skim through, okay? I'm not going to go into details. So I just want to give you enough material that you can learn on your own using your textbook. So when we talk about geometrical optics, we're gonna think of light not as a wave, not like an electromagnetic wave, but light um, we, we're gonna describe light as rays, okay, coming from a source of light, okay. So we're gonna represent the light here by a few rays. Those rays always move along a straight line, and um, I mean the light will move along those straight line, those rays, in a homogeneous medium, and then when light enters a different material, so it means with a different density, then things can happen. So what can happen? If the material is transparent, light will be refracted as it goes inside the material and then leaves the material. So this is called refraction. Or it can be reflected or both at the same time. So reflection, you see it's bouncing off the, the border between two materials. So here we have air and here we have water. And at the end, I will talk about diffraction again, even though we talked about that in the, in the unit about wave properties of light. So diffracted is when light is um, bending around the corner, right? So for example, if you have a telescope, light comes into the objective and it's going to spread out because it's bent around the corner. Okay, we, we, we will get to that more. Of course, um, I did a few demos in class, so I will upload those demos and I will do more demos. I will upload them in, the, in, in that playlist here. So you see how here I used a red laser. Okay, so red means one frequency. So it, it goes in a straight line. So that's the ray here. And when it's going to hit the border here between air and glass, two things happen. Some, some of the light will be reflected. So that angle here will be the same as this angle here. So this angle is called the angle of incidence. This is the angle of reflection. You see they are the same. And some of the light, most of the light here, so you have a different intensity here than you have here. Some of the light is going to enter the medium and it's going to be refracted, so it will bend. And because the medium is homogeneous, it's still going in a straight line. And then it's going to exit the medium to go back into air. And again, it's being refracted. So we define this imaginary line here, you see, as it's called the normal. Normal means perpendicular in math. Okay, it's not that there is something wrong about it, that it's abnormal. It's just normal means perpendicular. Right? So that angle is the angle of incidence. This angle is the angle of refraction. So what's happening here between, between that medium and that medium is that the density here is going to increase okay? because the molecules are more packed together. Because that increase of density, the light, instead of going at the speed of flight uh, 300,000 kilometers per second, it's going to slow down, okay? It's going to move slower. Because it's slowing down, okay, it's going to um, bend toward the normal. So when you go from slow, quote-unquote, to uh, fast to slow, 
light instead of keeping keeping its uh, path here will be bending toward the normal because he wants he wants to catch up the time it's uh, it's losing right if if it keeps going in a straight line it's going to take too much time it's losing too much time so it's going to refract because light always wants to go all the path of least time, okay? So it's gonna refract, so it will take less time to cross that um, that layer of glass. So this is glass here. So just, uh, I'm gonna show you the simulation, but just to remind you, the speed of flight, the notation is C, and in air or vacuum, in vacuum, and the speed of flight is 300,000 kilometers per second, or about 180,000 miles in one second. So it's really fast, but nevertheless, it's finite. So for example, if you are on Earth here, this is Earth, that's you standing on Earth, and that's the sun. It takes, it takes eight minutes for light to reach us, given the, the distance between the sun and the earth, which is 150 million kilometers, just to give you an idea, right? Or if you look at your computer, your laptop, it's about one foot. To go one foot, it's about one billionth of a second. So of course one billion is not much, but you have if you have a huge computer, it doesn't work very well, right? It will take too much time for information to go from one side to the other side. So anyway, that's the speed of light in air. When when the light goes into glass, okay, it's gonna slow down. So uh, the speed of light is gonna slow down. So now we have a speed of light that's gonna be. So I'm going to write that here as 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second. Okay, so 10 to the 8 is going to stay the same. So the speed of light in glass is going to be 3, for example, glass, 1.5 about, right? So it's glass or, or plexiglass uh, times 10 to the 8 meter per second. So of course, that factor here depends on the type of glass, but usually it's about 1.5. That number, 1.5, so C prime equals, it's going to be 2 times 10 to the 8 meter per second. So that's the speed of light. Um, if, um, if you have a glass with a 1.5 index of refraction, so that number here, 1.5, is the factor um, that um, by by uh, for which by which the the speed decreases. So the speed decreases by a factor of 1.5. That factor here, 1.5, is called the index of refraction. Okay, and if you do two over 3, you get 0 0.67 about. So it means that in glass, the speed of light is 70% the speed of light in, in a vacuum, right? So it's lost 30% of its speed. Now, you can have light going in, in the water, right? So you, you have water here, let's say it's a lake and you have the sun shining. And of course, the, water, the, the, the light can get in, into the water. Of course, it's going to be, again, it's going to be refracted, okay? So light in water doesn't go as fast as in air, so it's going to be refracted toward the normal. And of course, this is necessary, for example, if it's not deep down for plant to grow, to do photosynthesis, it's necessary for creams. So light goes inside the ocean here. Now the index of refraction is 1.33 for water, for fresh water. 
for um, for salty water, it's going to be a different number, but it's about 1.33. So you can find the speed of light. Can you do that? Um, the speed of light in, in fresh water, it's going to be... It's going to be 3 divided by 1.33. So it decreases, but it doesn't decrease as much as in glass because water is not as dense as glass. Of course, it's a liquid, right? So molecules can move about each other. So it's going to be less, but not as much. So C prime, it's going to be about 75% of C still is going to slow down, okay? So, so sometimes we always give the example that to understand why it's slowing down. So imagine you have a marching band. So you have a person here, person here, and, and they are all going at the same pace. You know, they have to because it's a marching band. So they move at the same pace and here they are walking on the pavement, for example. And as they move forward, so they have a distance, a given distance between two rows here. As they move forward, now they're going to enter a playing field, for example. Or maybe you have a lot of mud here. So you see that person here is going to slow down, cannot walk as fast. Maybe the shoes are sticking to the mud. You know, it's full of mud. So what's going to happen? You see, it's going to band, right? So it's going to band. And this one is going to sticky shoes, so it's stuck, and this one is moving forward. Does it make sense, right? So it means you, this one is held, so this one is not held, so it's going to move in this direction. You notice that the distance here, the distance between two rows, because of that delay, is smaller than that. Okay? So if you imagine now light, so uh, let me let me show you the app. So this is a great app here, except I don't have the right app. Let me find it. So here, I'm going to go from air to glass. Glass with an index of refraction of 1.5. So you are shining a laser beam into a piece of glass. So it could be the window, right? It's, you are looking through the window. You have the light from something you are looking at going through the window. So. This, this is glass, this is air. The index of refraction is 1.5, so the speed of flight is about 2 times 10 to the 8 meter per second. So you see, you have refraction. This is called the uh, normal, okay? It's an imaginary line. That angle is the angle of incidence. This angle is the angle of refraction. So if I take a compass, not a compass, sorry, a protractor here, so you have your protractor here. That angle here is uh, 10, 20, 30, 40. This is 40. That's going to be about 45 degrees. So this is 45 degrees. This angle here is going to be less. So the beam is refracted toward the normal because it wants to use the least possible time to cross. And it's about 30. So we're going to see there is an equation that uh, relates this angle to that angle here. It's called the snail's law. And we'll get back to that in a moment. In the meantime, if I look at my speedometer here, you see that the speed of light is about C in air. So this is a reflected, OK? It's not as, um, as much. Uh, it doesn't have as much intensity, so it's C. But inside the water, not the water, the glass, it's about 70%, right? So it's the light is slowing down. That's going to be the vector velocity, okay? You can see, you can measure also the intensity of light 
which is depends on the amplitude square. If you think of light as a wave, so the electro electric field, the amplitude electric field square, so that will be 100%. That's going to be 90%. It's just how, how many photons you have, right? So you have 90% here going, going through this area, and here you have 9%. So you can measure the flux, the, the intensity, the how, 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 much, how many photons going through. So it doesn't matter here, but I can switch to wave. And if I switch to rays, you see that the color does not change, right? So it means the frequency does not change, which makes um, sense because if I look from the window, see I have a window here, you see the trees, even though the light from the trees go through the window, it's still green doesn't change color, right? So you should expect the color to change as light goes through glass. But something has to change because the speed is less. So you see what is changing, if you can think about it. You see that's the wavelength that is changing. Okay, so the distance between here and there, distance between here and this, it's called the wavelength and it's getting smaller. And uh, remember that the the wavelength, the the speed of flight. Okay, so a speed is always a distance divided by your time. So distance, it's going to be the wavelength. We discussed that in the in the last uh, video, I think, from the last class. And t is a period. So that's going to be wavelength times frequency. Okay, so the speed of light is the wavelength times the frequency. And the frequency is just the color, okay? So it means you have X-ray, it's going to give a frequency. Gamma ray, it's a given frequency. Red is a given frequency. So frequency for blue, for example, is larger than frequency for red. So the frequency does not change. So if the speed goes down, the wavelength has to go down, okay? So to go back to my application here, you see the wavelength gets smaller. So what are these here? These you can think of that as crest. So remember when we talk about the wave property of light, imagine, imagine this is the surface of a lake and you throw like uh, something in it, like a pebble or a stone, it's gonna make a water wave, right? that will move at the speed of the wave. But if you are very far away from the source of the disturbance, you can see that the wave will look like plain, plain wave, okay, very, very far away. So these are crest, this is raw, this is crest. So at, if you take a snapshot at a given time, you're gonna have an up here, a down, an up, and down, and up and it's moving at a given speed. And that speed is the wavelength, the distance between two crests um, divided by the period, which means if you are standing here, how long it's gonna take to go down and up again, or wavelength times frequency, okay? Frequency will be how many up and down in one second at a given location. Okay, so that's just the parenthesis. You see that the rows here get uh, smaller. So let's go back to my ray model. So we we uh, describe light as rays moving in a straight line. Now, if I so this is slow, quote unquote, and this is fast. Now, if I do the opposite, so if I go from, for example, water. So you have you are in water and you have a a uh, waterproof laser, so you are diving and you shine your laser, you know, toward the surface. So this is the air. Because I cannot put the laser down, okay, that's just limitation. So imagine this is down and that's up, that's the air and that's the water here. So you, sh you are inside the water, you have this laser beam and shine toward the surface. You see that uh, the beam is refracted 
how to roll the surface or away from the surface. It's going to be away, okay? Because now it's moving fast, so it can take its time. You know, it's going to be refracted away from the surface. So again, you can imagine you have a marching band like this here. Marching, marching, marching. This one is going to be, when it's reached the border here, that person here is going to move fast. So it's going to be like this. Okay? So this is called refraction. So you go here from slow to fast. Okay? It has a lot of application, of course, because that's how we're going to build lenses. So if I have my uh, slab here again, if it's um, C here, so of course here it's not at an angle, so it's gonna go in a straight line. But if I rotate here, you see you see the refraction. Uh, notice that this ray here is parallel to that ray, so it's uh, very symmetric. So that that re refracted angle here, can we show the normal? So that refracted angle here is going to be the same as that angle here, the incidence angle here. And this angle here is going to be the same as that angle. So for, for proof, you can I refer you to the textbook, and it's, it's all about um, geometry. Now you can, you can have fun here, you can play. I highly recommend that you do play. See here, so you might ask how come, how come I do not have a rainbow? It's just because I have one color here. So if you want the rainbow, you need to have white light. And you see you have the rainbow. So what do you see here, interestingly, is that the, you see the white light, the light from the sun or from an incandescent light, okay? It doesn't work with LED. Uh, incandescent light, uh, it's, it's a mix of all the color of the rainbow or all the, 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 the light from the sun works also, or flashlight works that, that, that will work also. You see that you, you have the rainbow. That's because blue light will refract more than red light. So that means, what does it mean to, um, in terms of speed, if someone can answer? It means that blue light does not have the same speed in glass than red light. Okay, that, that's what it means. Either you, ha you will have more refraction for blue light than, than for red light. Okay. So if you have a conceptual question here, um, if you have a conceptual question here, how will you answer? So from air to water, the velocity will decrease by a factor of 1.3. The wavelength will decrease and the frequency does not change. It stays the same. Okay, so these are some of the demo application for this refraction property of light. It's going to be um, making lenses to to fix the eyesight. So if you have parallel rays, so you have parallel rays when you are looking at something very far away, all the rays are going to be parallel to each other because they are so far away. So imagine that you are very far away, so you have a source source of light, maybe you are looking at a tree. So of course, if you are close, ray comes in this direction. But if you are very, 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 very far away, the, everything happens like now the rays are parallel to each other. So we're going to say that when an object, this is the object, is very far away, all the rays are parallel to each other. That's what's happening with the sun, right? So if you are on Earth here, this is the Earth, and here you have you have the sun, and I don't have yellow. So this is the sun here. Of course, the ray goes spread out, but by the time it reaches the Earth, all the ray, are, uh, it doesn't have to be perpendicular to the surface, okay, sorry. 
unless you are at uh, some places on earth, but otherwise rays can come at an uh, incline here, depending if it's the summer or the winter or where you are located on earth. But you see the rays are all parallel to each other because it is very far. Okay, so the rays are parallel, parallel. This is called the converging lens. So it means you take your piece, piece, imagine you have a piece here of glass, and now you curve it, okay? You can see the, the effect of curving. What you make, you make the ray converge, right? And they all seem to converge at one point. That point here is called the focal point. The distance here between the center of the lens and the focal point, it's called the focal distance. So this is called the converging lens, right? So you take your lens, this I have a lens, and it, it has to be in this direction. So it's just a magnifying glass. You can pay them very cheap. It's very cheap in uh, dollar stores. They are used for reading, uh, reading glasses, a few dollars. Now you have the opposite. So you take your piece of um, glass, and now you curve it, I mean, this here, you have your piece of glass, then you curve it in, in the opposite direction. You curve it like a cave. Okay, so what's happening now, the parallel rays are gonna diverge from each other, and they seem to come from the same point here, which is also called the focal point. So this is called a diverging lens or concave lens. It makes like a cave. This is convex or converging lens, okay? So it's a refraction. It's not only a property of light. It could be also a property. It is a property of sound as well. So when sound moves, it's going to be uh, moving not uh, not as fast as light, right? Because the sound moves at a speed of um, I think at three about three forty meter per second, which is about uh, one mile in five seconds. Okay, so it's very slow, but that speed depends on the temperature. So if you increase the temperature, that means the molecules. So the speed of sound is actually the speed of the molecules. It makes sense because the molecules are going to push each other and they cannot push uh, faster than they are moving. Okay, so they, the molecules of air are moving. They have this random motion. So if you increase the temperature, they're going to move faster. So the speed here is going to increase. So the speed of sound depends on the temperature. If you lower the temperature, the, the sound will move uh, slower. So if you, if you look at the, above the ground, if it's the morning here, the, the ground and the sun shines, the ground is going to be warm. The, 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 the ground absorbs the infrared, it's going to burp out the infrared or it's going to absorb the light from the sun, burp out infrared, so this layer here is going to be warmer, and this layer here is going to be cooler. So if you have a very far away sound, like not very far, but not close, like a highway, you know, with a lot of cars or a train passing by, and if it's the morning, imagine sound, okay, so the sound is moving, What's going to happen here? So here it's moving fast, and here it's moving slow. So imagine the marching band. So what's going to happen? It's going to band away, right? So sound will band away, and it's not going to be that loud, okay? You're going to not hear those cars passing on the highway. Now, in the evening, it's going to be the opposite, right? Now the, the, the sun has set, so there is no more sun. Here the ground is cooler, it's cooling very fast. It's not like water. Water takes a lot of time to cool down, not the ground. The ground is cool now, this is hot. And now it's going to do the opposite, so you can hear those cars driving on the highway, very loud noise or, or the train passing by. So refraction happens also of our sound.
Okay. Sometimes you have in the weather, uh, you 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 have to you can look it up. You know how that happens. You can have an inversion, especially if you are this is a lake. For example, the 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 air here is going to be cool. Here is going to be warm. So if you are across the lake, you can talk to each other. You can hear the sound at a very large distance. Okay. So the same phenomenon happens with light, and that will explain how mirage works. So first of all, our brain think of light as rays, rays moving along a straight line. <laughs> so if you are uh, looking at the sky, you have blue here. So the blue of the sky is going to move you know, along that ray, so that will be the image, uh, the object, you see the object. So it's going to move and your brain, you know, think, okay, the, the sky is blue and this is what I see here. I see a, a blue sky there. However, the blue from the sky here, because atmosphere comes into layer, so here it's going to be hot and here it's going to be cool. And light goes faster in air, uh, which is hot, hot air, than it is going for in, in cool air. So it works like sound, right? So light goes faster in hot air than in cool air. Why? Because hot air has less density than cool air. So the, imagine the marching band coming here, it's going to be here, and then here it's going to go fast, so it's going to it's going to bound in this direction. And your brain still thinks that blue from the sky comes from that direction. Okay, because your brain doesn't know about refraction. So it thinks that ray, that the source of light is here. So this is called like an apparent me image, or you can think that of a virtual image. Okay, it doesn't exist, but it seems that it exists. You see, there is no light coming from here. So as far as the brain is concerned, the blue sky is here on the ground. So you know that there is no sky on the ground. So you're going to think, oh, maybe it's water. And it's twinkling. It's twinkling because the atmosphere, of course, is moving. Right? The layers are moving. So uh, there is a very nice video that you can find on uh, YouTube. Oh, before we keep going, we, we continue. Forgot to tell you that many of the examples I use in my slides come from that book here. And I highly recommend that reading. It's conceptual physics, so you don't need a lot of advanced math. And it's very interesting and it's very cheap. So I highly recommend that book. Uh, it's, it's a great, great, great book. So, um, I forgot what I was going to say. So this is called the virtual image. Oh yeah, the video. Okay. So it's a video. You can find it on YouTube. It's a very nice video. I'm going to skip through and I will put the, the... Hi friends. I'm sure you know the nursery rhyme. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I... So he's going to explain why a star... Twinkle. I'm skipping here and I'm going to speed up and speed up even more. And I will put the link in the description. Now, when we look up at the stars, the light is coming from the star. When light enters the atmosphere, it undergoes refraction because light is going from vacuum to the atmosphere. As we discussed, the atmosphere is made up of many layers. Having different. So you see that it's going um, toward the normal because you go from fast to slow. Densities. The bending of light also takes place at the boundaries of these layers. So the light from the star that reaches our eyes has gone through many, many refractions. If we trace back the light, the star is at a different position from its actual position. 
So that will be the apparent position of the star. It's like a virtual image, right? Because your brain thinks that the source is along that line here, straight line. As you can see, the apparent position of the star is higher than its real position. And this takes place due to atmospheric refraction. But remember, the layers of the atmosphere are constantly shifting and changing. So the refraction of light is continuously changing and the apparent position of the star keeps fluctuating. The path of light coming from the star is constantly changing. And so the amount of light that enters our eyes keeps changing. As a result, the star appears brighter sometimes and sometimes dimmer to us. This bright dim, bright dim effect makes us think that the star is twinkling. Okay. So I, I thought that was a nice application. Okay, so we can also explain uh, virtual images here due to refraction. So you have uh, the foot here, the foot of the lady, and is seen by this observer further up. Okay, so the, it's like she has a broken leg with a short, shorter leg, right? Of course, you, you have more than one ray, but you have a limited amount of ray getting, getting to the observer. So if you look at um, what's happening here, you have ray coming this direction, and maybe it's gonna be refracted away. So if there is someone here looking at the feet, I don't know why they will all look at the feet, but it's gonna see the feet. Maybe you have rays coming in this direction. So you have a crab here looking at the feet as well. It's gonna be seeing those feet. And some of the ray here will, uh, will be in this direction. So it's gonna be refracted away. I don't know if I can make the thing here. And where those rays, it's supposed to be a straight line. And where those rays, it's gonna meet here. That's gonna be your virtual feet, okay? So this is called a virtual image. So for example, same, that's a nice image here. So if you look just at the head, if you are looking at the head of the fish, you see you have many rays coming out and, and some of the rays here will be refracted toward you. So as long as the ray touches, touch, touch your eye, you will be able to see, but your brain thinks that the source of those rays is at the extension here, where, where the two rays meet. So that's going to be a virtual image, okay? If you try to scoop the fish, you're going to miss it. So this is called the uh, apparent depth, and that's called the real depth, okay? And you can do that for every single point of the fish, and you will have your, uh, you, you, you will build your virtual image, okay? So to build the image, you just take two rays, but you can take more than two rays, but all the rays that will go into your eyes will meet here at that single point to make the, the nose of, of the fish. Of course, you have more rays coming, so you have rays here, you have crab, can see it and you have rays there. So another person will be able to see the fish. But my point is that it's misleading, right? So you see a virtual image. So here you have a fish here, light is refracted. Your brain thinks that the fish is along that ray, that the source of light is here. That's gonna be a virtual image of the fish. That also explain why the, if you have a pencil in, in a glass of water, it's going to appear to be broken. You see, that will be the virtual pen, the virtual image of the pen. Okay, same, same thing if you are looking in the mirror, you see yourself beyond the mirror. And the light doesn't really come from, from your, your image, right? It seems to come from your image, but it does not release really come from your image. So it's a virtual image. Okay. 
Okay, so that I already explained. The material here, transparent material, are material that uh, uh, through which light can go through. Air has a speed of uh, c, so the, the speed of light in air is about 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second. In glass uh, or plastic or plexiglass, it's going to be about uh, 1.5, 1.5 here. Glass and um, ice is 1.3. Diamond has a very large index of refraction. And we're going to see that's what makes uh, diamond so shiny, 2.4. That means that the speed of light, if you want to find the speed of light on, in diamond, it's going to be 3 divided by 2.4. We get that number here, 1.5 times 10 to the 8 meter per second. So that's going to be 40% of the speed of light in air. 40%, so it's really slowing down. So it has lost like 60%. Okay? So you can pause the video, and that takes some thinking. It's not that easy. It's a typical conceptual question. You can think of that. So remember, when you go from uh, fast to slow, you move away from the normal. And when you go from slow to fast, you move toward the normal. Faster speed means higher intensity, uh, density. Slower speed means slower uh, density. Higher density means higher index of refraction. So large index of refraction means the, uh, there is more uh, slow slowing down. So let's try to do this. So. So you see here, this angle here is the angle of incidence. This angle here is the angle, uh, the, the angle of refraction. And you see that angle here is larger than this one. So it's moving away from the normal. So it means uh, if it's moving away from the normal, that means here it's faster and here it's slower, relatively faster here than it is there. So if it's slower here, that means that N1 is larger than N2. Okay, so if you take the number line here, N1, N1, okay, is larger than N2. So moving away from the normal, that means the light is spinning, spinning up, it has a larger speed. So you see here from N2 to N3, it does the opposite. It's moving toward the normal. So that means that N2, N2 is larger than N3. So that's even faster. So N2 is larger than N3. N3. Okay, so N3 is the smaller, and then you go to uh, N2, oh wait, did I do a mistake? Uh, away, away from the normal, it means it's faster, N3, so you see I got confused here, so maybe you can help me out. So N3 is toward, okay? So that means N3 is smaller than N2. Okay, that's what I had uh, here, okay? So N3 is smaller than N2, okay? So N3 is here. So because it's moving toward the normal, so this one N2 is smaller than N1, N3 is, no, N2 is smaller than N1, so N3 is larger than N2, sorry. <laughs> sorry, 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 so N3 is larger than N2 
because you see the ray is moving toward the normal, so that means very slow. So that means very slow. Very slow means large, large index. So N3, N3 has to be larger than N2, and this angle here is larger than that angle there, so N3 has to be also larger than N1. Okay, so it takes sometimes um, just a, a few thinking, I went too fast. So you have N3 larger than N1 larger than N2. Okay, so make sure I got it right. If it's moving away, okay, so that means this is faster than there. So N1 is greater than N2. Moving toward, it means it's slower. Right? So if it's slower, that means N3 is larger than N2. And this angle here is smaller than that angle here, so you're going to have N3 here. Okay. I should have prepared, but that's fine. I'm sure you got it right. So I don't know. Uh, should we keep going? So now you have a snail law, and it gives you a very simple relationship between the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. So this is called Snellis law. Okay, so you have a relationship between the incidence here and the refracted there. Okay, and that will be the equation. Okay, so that means, for example, if you go from 1 to 1.33, you're going to have N1 times sine theta 1 equals n2 times sine theta 2. Okay, so let me show you an example. So let me take an uh, incidence angle here. It's going to be, let's say, I have 40, like 40, 40, like this. Let's say it's about here. So the, here I have 40, right? So this angle here is 40, the index here is 1, and the index here is uh, 1.33. So Snell's law say, so first of all, you, you look where you are going, okay? So you go from the source is in, is, Sorry, the source is in air. So you go from air to water. Okay, first step. And then you write down, I go from air, that's where the source is, to water. So air, the index of refraction is 1. Water, the index of refraction is 1.33. The angle here in air equals 40 degrees. And you want to know the angle, the angle of incidence is 40 degrees, sorry, and the angle of refraction is about 10, 20, 25, maybe 28, about 28, right? And we want to find out if you have the relationship Snelly says that N1 sinus, the angle of incidence, equals N2 sin, sin, not sinus, sin, the angle of refraction. And again, you go from here to there. So let's find out. So you have N1, which is 1, times sine uh, 40 equals question mark 1.33 sine let's check uh, about 28 okay so you take your calculator and um, make sure the mode is in degrees okay so you have one times sine sine 40 that's going to be 0 0.64 about, okay, 0 0.64. Let's say what we get on the other side, 1.33 times sine about 28, something like this, 
And you also have, uh, yes, maybe it's sign 30. Okay, it's not, I don't have the exact number, but it should be like sign, uh, sign 29, maybe. It's, it's, it's around there, okay? Because it's an experiment, you don't expect to be exact. That's the idea of an experiment. You can always do a percentage error. That's what makes those uh, simulations super interesting, but you get the idea. Okay, so we're gonna take an example to make sure you know how to solve. Okay, that comes from your textbook. That's a Wolf, a Wolfson. Wolfson, the essential physics, but you also have it in your, uh, from the book from Wolfson. But you also have it in the university physics, the, the one we are uh, using, or even the, any physics. I mean, if you want the proof, demonstration, you can look at those textbooks here. So it's called Wolfson, I think it's fundamental physics and uh, university physics. I can look it up for you, but I think the textbook I used was, uh, Something this this one, okay? Essential University Physics uh, Wolfson. Okay, so you have the demonstration. It's just geometry. If you are interested, okay. So let's let's try to do a very simple example here. You can pause the video. So that example comes from a book I use to teach the um, MCAT. This one is called the uh, principle of physics. So it's called principle of physics, I think. No, or it's just called, uh, I think it's called principle of physics. And it's from Johnson and Cutnell. Oh, it's just called physics, I don't remember. But if you, um, if you type Johnson and Cutnell, I think the publisher is uh, really, you, you're going to find it. So that uh, that slide comes from that book. And this book here, I think it's just called um, Physics. That book here is very good for reviewing the MCAT. So anyway, now I have to start over. Okay. Uh, okay, so you can pause the video and try to do it here. Takes me so much time. So if the source here is in air, light goes into water. So we're gonna do, okay, I'm going from air to water. So air, um, the, Index of refraction is one. The index of refraction for water is 1.33. The angle, the angle of incidence is 46 degrees with respect to the normal. Okay, so you have to be careful. If they say with respect to the surface, then you have to do 90, 90 minus this angle here, but it is relative to the normal, so we are good. That's going to be 46 degrees, and that's what they want here, question mark. So you write down Snell's law, so N1, so it's going to be 1, 1, times sine 46 equals, equals 1.33 sine 32. So you are... Um, solving for the sign here, and then you have to unsign what. Okay, so you take your calculator, you should do it, it's not that hard. What you do, you do sine 46, so sine 46, and then you divide by 1.33, that's going to be the sign, and then you take the, 
you, you take to take the angle out so you take the uh, second side of this the second minus you call back the same answer and it's going to be about 33 degrees right so if this is 46 that's going to be 33 degrees right now here the source in the second part of the equation the source is in the water and that will be the angle of incidence and this is the angle of refraction so now we go from water we go from water to air water is uh, 1.33 air is 1 the angle here is 46 46 so that's going to be larger right so that's going to be equation mark so we're going to do one one and oh we're going to write it here n1 sine 46 equals um n2 sine theta 2 so you have one 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 thirty three sine 46 equals one time sine theta two so you take your calculator here you're going to do 1.33 times sine 46 enter okay do i did it right okay and then you want to find out the angle so it's going to be sine um, the inverse sign, so it's going to be, you call back the answer here, it's going to be 73 degrees here, 73 degrees, and that was, no, sorry, 73 degrees is here, and that's going to be 46, okay? Seventy four about thirty three about if you keep all the decimals. Okay. Uh, interestingly, you have a displacement here. Well, I, I show you that with um, the, the the second slide. You see, it's going to be refracted toward, and then it's going to be refracted away. This angle here is the same as that angle there. Those rays are parallel. And this is called the displacement. Here it's going to be displaced. That, that's why if you have like a CD in the sun, you're going to see like a rainbow because it's going to be reflected and then you have a displacement between the rays and, and it's going to be a differential between all the colors. Okay, so here is another problem you can do. And um, what do they want? They want uh, that angle here. So we can pause the video and try to do this one. They want to know at which angle here you can have to place the projector you can sh so that you can shine on the chest and you can see the chest because of course light from the chest is going to go in this direction. So it's going to be, you, you shine the light on the chest and then you can see the chest. And you have to take in account the refraction. So you can do this problem here, it's not that hard. You can pause the video because it's going to take forever to get it right here. No. Yes, here. So um, you want to find theta 1. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going from air 
to water, okay? Because the source, this is the source here. We go from air to water. Air is one and water is 1.33. The angle here is 30, uh, theta one, and the angle here is theta two. But theta two, theta two, sorry, you see you have a high angle triangle here. So you can use, you have the opposite and you have the adjacent. So you can use tan theta two equals opposite over adjacent. So you can find the angle here. So if I find the angle, it's gonna be, um, tan to the minus one of two divided by 3.3 .3, and you get about 31 degrees. Okay, I'm missing some decimals here, that's fine. So here you have theta one give you 31 degrees. This is 31 degrees and it's bending toward the normal because it's slowing down. So you can have Snell's law that says one, so one times sine theta one equals 1.33 sine theta two. So sine theta one equals 1.33 sine 31 degrees. So if you take your calculator here, you're gonna do sine 31. So of course you pause the video, times 1.33, okay? And you take the inverse. So it's, um, um, okay, so that's gonna be, so inverse sine here. That number, 0 0.685, and you get 44 about, because I, I left out decimal 43 degrees. So this is 43 degrees. And you know, it makes sense because that angle here has always to be smaller than this angle here. So if you have 43 degrees here, you have about uh, 40 degrees, you have 30 degrees there. Let's see. About 44, 31. You can even check here, right? So if you take, go back to here, if you have uh, 40 degrees, so 40, 40, you see, you have 30. 40, 30, this is water, and this is air. So those, those, I found that these, these are amazing. It's amazing. Uh, you can see here, it's from the University of Colorado. They, they got a lot of grants to develop those app simulations. They are absolutely amazing. So again, with a virtual image, right? If you have that chest here, so now you, you have the projector, so you have light, so now the source is the chest, right? So that's the source. Light comes here. I, I, I need only two rays, but of course you have more than two rays. And from, if you are looking here, those rays seems to come from there. And that's called the virtual image. It's not there, it's like a ghost, ghost chest. So this is called the apparent depth. And again, it's, uh, again, you, you don't have just two rays, okay? But you need only two rays to, to have that point here located, right? So you have more, more than, you have another one here, another ray here coming from there, and it seems to come from here. Of course, you can have more from that point here, you can have more, you can do that for all the points. It's like you have the uh, uh, truck, it's, it's made of those 
those little pixels so you can have an image of each pixel and then you have your image here okay of course it's going to go in all directions but only those coming in this direction I'm, I'm going to see here so i'm losing intensity of light so anyway this is called a virtual image and of course if you try to catch it then there will be nothing so this is used in uh, uh, like especially in the 19th century you know when they they love magic um, ma ma magic magical tricks they they use they use this virtual image to um, to make like ghosts right so for example if you go to the haunted house or if you go uh, disney has this haunted house that used to be very popular i don't know if it's uh, same and you see ghosts it's like um you see people dancing and it seems that they can go through they seem very real and they go through table and they go through furniture and one way to do that to, to is that for example if you have glass if you have glass here and let's say glass that can refract light but also reflect light and then let's say if you are sitting here like in a train so you are sitting here like in a train and you are looking in this direction so what's going to happen here is that if you have people hidden, okay, so they are hiding, maybe they are dancing together. Okay, people dancing together. Light, light from that person here, it's going to go, of course, in more than one direction but go in this direction and it's going to be reflected toward you but your brain again is misled and it thinks that it's coming here so you're going to see a ghost image right a virtual image so it will it's going to be an image of this person the exact image except it's virtual so it means if you have table of course it's going to go full Right? And, and same thing for this person. So you can, you can make an op optical illusion using this. So here it's not reflection, it's refrac refraction, but it's the same thing. You have a virtual image here. And if, if the source is inside the slow medium, so light, you know, travel in a straight line, and it's going to be refracted away. And if you extend those rays here, the virtual image is going to be here. So the apparent depth is going to be smaller. How do we find the apparent depth? You can use that equation. So it means the apparent depth here will be the real one divided by 1.33, right? Because we want that depth to be smaller. Okay. So here, the answer it's coming from the water, okay, to the air. So you can work it out from the water to the air. So the coin on the ground is going to look closer to you if you are if you are in the air, right? The depth will be three divided by one point thirty three. Okay, so it's really, it's really easy to understand. Okay, you you just apply the equation that comes from the book Johnson, Cutnell and Johnson physics. Okay, very good for MCAT. So now it could be the opposite. Okay, so what will be the opposite? It means that now the source is in the air, not in the water. Right, so you have the water here. And uh, there was a coin. So this is a coin. Someone is holding it, and you are in the water, looking at that coin here. Maybe you're trying to grab. So what's going to happen here is that light. Of course, I'm going to take the two 
two corner here. Of course, if it's straight, no refraction. But let's say I have a refract, uh, I have a beam here. Okay, this that's gonna be the normal. So now it's gonna be refracted toward. Okay, because you go from fast to slow. And this one will be refracted toward. So if I extend, if I extend those rays, this seems to come from a place here. Okay, so the ghost image of the penny of the object that someone is holding above the surface. So this is the water here. The water. And this is you. That will be the virtual image. Okay. If you have light here straight, it's gonna go in straight line. So the source, the source here is in the air. And and you, you are collecting the light in, in the water. So in that case, it's going to be the opposite, okay? So that's going to be D prime, and that's going to be D. So D prime equals 1.33 D, okay? Because it's just the opposite. Or you can just plug it in. Okay, so these are problems I'm going to go... Uh, so you can pause the video and I'm not going to do them. I'm, I'm, you can try to do them at home and I will go over them next time.